Hey everyone, this is Josh. In this video, we'll be discussing spectroscopy, and we're going to be working through a couple example problems uh, and talking about um, some compounds and uh, their individual characteristics. Uh, the first compound that I wanted to talk about is 3 methoxyphenyl with a molec molecular formula of 7 carbons, 8 hydrogens, and 2 oxygens. Um, so, for this compound, we're just going to be talking about um, why the different hydrogens, carbons, and functional groups of 3-methoxyphenol, why they are giving the peaks um, that we're seeing on the HNMR, the CNMR, and the IR. Um, so we'll be talking about just, yeah, just the individual parts of this compound. Um, I would encourage you to, to pause the video before I start going through it um, and just give yourself an opportunity to see if you can identify you know, which hydrogens or which carbons um, are making the peaks that we uh, are seeing on the HNMR and CNMR and as well for the IR. So I would encourage you to pause the video and see uh, and give it a shot for yourself. Alright, well hopefully you had a chance to, uh, to work through that. Um, I wanted to start with the HNMR up here at the top. And uh, with the HNMR I'd like to start off first by just identifying the um, the eight hydrogens that we do have within our compound, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and number them. Um, we have I'm going to number this one with the alcohol as hydrogen number one. Um, these three hydrogens that are coming off as a methoxy group um, from coming off of the benzene ring, um, I'm going to number those as two, even though there's three hydrogens there. Um, we have a hydrogen here that I'm going to label, sorry, that I'm going to label as number three, that one four, that one five, oops, five, and that one six. Okay. So in total, um, we have eight hydrogens. Okay, we have four on the benzene ring, we have one coming. Um, off of the oxygen and the alcohol, and three coming off the carbon in the methoxy group down there at the bottom. Okay. Um, over here on the HNMR, we have four um, peaks or four peak clusters um, that we can see. Um, the first thing I want to point out that's very helpful on this particular HNMR is that we are given the integration curves shown in that faint red, um, if you can see them. Um, what the integration curve tells us is it tells us the amount of hydrogens that are correlating um, to the peak that we're seeing, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start off with this peak over here, um, furthest to the right, uh, the furthest upfield, um, showing up at about 3.7. Um, I'll go ahead and write that over here at about 3.7. The hydrogen or the hydrogens that are correlating to that peak are the ones coming off of the methoxy group. Um, and the reason why that is, is first of all, the integration curve um, is, is the tall, tallest or one of the tallest of the integration curves that we see, meaning that there are more hydrogens correlating to that peak um, than to the other peaks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just write OCH3 right there um, to show that that is the methoxy group. Um, another thing that could help us identify this as the hydrogens coming off of the methoxy group is the fact that um, hydrogens that are on the benzene ring will most likely show up in uh, the, the 5 to 7 range um, where most of our other hydrogens are showing up here on the HNMR. Um, they would not show up this far um, upfield like we're seeing for this particular peak. Okay. Um, this next peak, the smaller one that's showing, about, showing up at about 5.6, um, the integration curve for that one um, is smaller than the one that we were just discussing, meaning that there are less hydrogens correlating to that peak. Um, this particular peak happens to be our alcohol. And a few reasons why um, we can identify that as the alcohol is the fact that, first of all, it's a, it's a small peak. Um, and uh, alcohols usually sm show up as, as small peaks. Um, the integration curve tells us that there's 
uh, most likely just one hydrogen there. Um, and again, the other the only hydrogens that we do have left in this particular compound are benzene hydrogens, meaning that those will most likely show more downfield uh, than these two peaks that we've already discussed. So that brings us to our last two peaks. Um, the integration curve at this one showing up about 6.4. The integration curve um, is just as tall as the methoxy group that we identified first, meaning that there are three hydrogens also correlating to that peak, um, or, or in this case, a peak cluster. Um, over here on the compound, the ones that we labeled H4, H5, and H6, those three hydrogens are closely um, shielded um, enough to where they are showing up uh, as, the, as, a, as the same peak on our HNMR. Okay, so those three hydrogens um, coming off of the benzene ring that we have labeled as H4, H5, and H6, those three hydrogens are correlating to this peak over here at 6.4. Um, so I'll just go ahead and write that as H4, H5, and H6, like that. And that leaves us with our final hydrogen, which is our the one that we labeled H3 as the final as the final peak that's showing up here at 7.1. Again, that is H3. Um, and so, besides just the process of elimination, besides that being the last hydrogen that we have to identify, um, that hydrogen is also uh, not only is it coming off of a benzene ring, which means it typically has a higher shift value. Um, it's also stuck between two carbons, which I will circle in green, two carbons that are highly deshielded because those two carbons are directly attached to oxygens. Um, so the combination of it being attached to a benzene ring as well as being between two highly deshielded carbons is the reason why that particular hydrogen um, is showing, mo showing up most downfield there at 7.1. Um, moving on to the CNMR, um, with the CNMR, we uh, the good thing about this particular CNMR is we have um, seven different peaks, uh, which helps us know that we have seven different carbons, which would be useful um, if we weren't given the, the molecular structure or, or the compound and we were trying to um, deduce that. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and identify the seven carbons on our structure um, this one over here with the methox group, I'll label as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there are our 7 compounds, 6 of them being as part of the benzene ring. Um, the typical shift values for carbons within uh, a benzene ring usually show up between 100 and 150, um, which is super helpful. We have those 6 carbons. Um, that are, are a part of the benzene ring and we have six peaks showing up roughly in the 100 to 150 range. Um, that right there um, helps us know that the carbon that we labeled number one on the methoxy group is this, comp is this peak showing up um, furthest, up, furthest up field over here um, at about 55, right? That's the carbon of our methoxy group. Um, and then as far as the peaks showing up between 100 and 150, um, the easiest way to go about this is by identifying that the carbons directly attached to the oxygen within the ben oxygens within the benzene ring are going to be furthest downfield. Um, and it, it may be difficult to, to, to specifically say that that this one is the carbon attached to the methoxy group and that this one's the carbon attached to uh, the alcohol. Um, but through uh, practice and uh, just familiarity with working through a lot of um, CNMR problems, the one attached to the methoxy group uh, will actually be more deshielded. So... This peak right here, I'm just going to go ahead and write uh, a number two next to it as the one that we labeled um, in our compound, which means this one is number six, the one attached to the alcohol. Um, the one that 
appears to be alone right here at about 130, um, similar to our HNMR. Uh, that carbon is actually our carbon number seven, and the reason why he's more deshielded than the other three peaks down there by at, at 100 uh, is again because it's between um, two deshielded carbons that I'll circle in green, um, and because it's between those two deshielded carbons. Uh, he himself is, is also more deshielded than the other carbons of our benzene ring. Okay, um, Similar to the differentiation that we made between um, our carbon number two and our carbon number six, um, and how we said that carbon number two was actually more deshielded, our carbon number three, that I'll circle in red, will also be slightly more deshielded than our carbon number five, um, and both those carbons will be slightly more deshielded than carbon number four because they are closer um, to the carbons I circled in green, which are attached to oxygens. So um, I'll go ahead and write this furthest downfield carbon uh, peak as carbon number three, and then the one in the middle as number five, and the one furthest upfield as carbon number four. Okay? Um, now, to, to finish off with the IR, um, to help us uh, confirm that this compound and, these, um, and that these uh, graphs particularly do pertain to 3-methoxyphenol, um, the biggest giveaway would have to be this broad peak we see here um, over there in the, the 3,000 um, to 3,300 range. Uh, correlates to an alcohol, um, which we have on our compound. And this cluster of peaks right here um, showing up, you know, roughly around 3,000 um, correlates to our sp2 carbon hydrogen bonds um, and as well as our sp3 carbon hydrogen bonds. And we have both of those in um, in our compound. All the, all the carbons within the benzene ring are sp2 and this carbon over here on the methoxy group uh, is, is an sp3 carbon. And again that's our alcohol peak right there, that really broad one. Um, the other giveaways for this for this, uh, for this compound on, on the IR is this peak showing up between a thousand and, uh, and 1200 is a carbon bonded um, to an oxygen and uh, the, the final helpful peak would have to be this one around 1600 or 1650 is a carbon double bonded to a carbon, which we definitely have within our compound uh, considering we're working with a benzene ring. Um, so again, there's the, uh, the HNMR, the CNMR, and the IR for 3-methoxyphenol. Um, hopefully we're able to get a better understanding of why certain carbons and hydrogens show up on um, certain places of the HNMR and CNMR, uh, and hopefully this was, uh, was beneficial um, in being able to identify those within structures. Thank you for watching.